you know, I'm a, I'm a, I don't know if I'd go as far as say spiritual person, but I do believe that there is a sort of plan and that things are written out for us and we kind of choose between one or two paths, but most of it's kind of ready and we just have to be bold enough to do it. You might not have thought you were, but everything you've done since you were six has led to this moment. Serena has this unbelievable ability to keep us so calm in some of the highest pressure moments that you'll ever be in as a footballer. She installed a philosophy that we're all straight away on board with. I think most of all, belief came in this team and a really, really strong internal power of wanting to win every game. We genuinely believed, I genuinely believed, that we could go all the way. We had these players that could just produce these magical moments out of nowhere. I just didn't feel like we were destined to go home. I thought we were destined to bring it home. Deep in my heart, I knew that we had the talent in that team to win it. In the months leading up to the Euros, England had been unbeaten under Serena Wiegmann. There was a lot of excitement about what she could do and how far this very talented group of women could go. Very nice too. Oh, I've got the shooting boots on today. But England weren't favourites. The bookmakers didn't have them as favourites. We've had a history of, of near misses. The last time England were in a final was 2009 Euros. The public probably didn't even know we had a final, really. Hadn't even introduced central contracts then, so there was a lot of girls playing football part-time. For European glory for the all-conquering Germany team. We ended up getting beat 6-2, so it was a very bad day kind of at the office for us. It felt this summer that there was a different vibe around this group of women, and they had a new captain and a young captain. I think I had, you know, six minutes under my belt from the World Cup. I don't know, it's a gamble, I suppose you could say. There was campaigns left, right and centre going on. Couldn't even walk down the shop without seeing a lioness on a bus stop, on a crisp packet, on advertising boards. They were absolutely everywhere, and that's never happened before. It was a case of this could be a turning point for women's football. I suppose success would have been getting to the final, um, at least just because we'd always been a, a semi-final team in this generation. I never wanted to again reach another semi-final and not make it. One of the main things was us growing the women's game. Can we inspire the next generation? And what I was hoping, why I was quite nervous for them, is, um, is that they could justify themselves and show that, yeah, we deserve to be on this stage. We always knew it was going to be so big because it was in England. There was no other football tournament going on. All eyes are going to be on this tournament and therefore on us. Finally, today is the day, the first day of those championships. England is the host. Tonight's first England game against Austria happening at Old Trafford is sold out. More than half a million tickets for all the matches have already been sold before a ball has even been kicked. The day in general surrounding the first game was obviously quite nerve wracking. I think it would only be natural for the players to feel that weight of expectation. The stadium was packed. I remember walking out and I normally look for my family during it and I couldn't this time. Definitely think there was like an edge, maybe a little bit of anxiousness in the lineup. Our families were directly in front of us. I thought there's no way I'm gonna get through this if I can see them crying, so I just close my eyes. Yeah, we were very emotional, but what a feeling to play in front of that many people for your country at home, Euros. A year later than scheduled, it's finally here. Fitting, the opening game takes place at the Theatre of Dreams. The Lionesses will be aiming to turn dreams into a reality this summer. Yeah. Crazy. I mean, I've played there before, but that was different. You couldn't hear anything. You couldn't hear your teammate next to you. Austria looking sharp early on in this game. Oh, that's a mistake. And the shot's deflected. Just need to clear your lines. Lee Williamson. Confidence is one thing. 
Just get this opening 10 minutes out of the way. A lot of people were there, expectation on us to do well. We were probably favourites in the game. England unbeaten under Serena Wiegmann. 14 games, 12 wins, two draws. England giving up cheap possession early on here. It's a home tournament, you have to win your opening game. It was tense, it was nervy. With the expectation that they have to perform to a level to keep the fans coming back, and so they had a lot of pressures. Haven't had any real clear cut chances on goal. And wins it back. Kirby to Beth Mead. Is this the moment? Off the line. It's a goal. It's been given. Beth Mead blows the roof off Old Trafford. Unbelievable scenes. And what a sensational finish from Beth Mead. She's on her revenge tour, left out of the Olympics last year. It was a cagey affair against a good team. Barbara Dunst with some direct running at England that opened them up. Win not sealed yet. Kind of that first game, first tournament nerves a little bit. I think we, we put it down to. Big crowd, expectation. Got the goal, got the win, and just kind of chalked that off and moved on to the next one. Not the most convincing win for England under their new head coach, Serena Beekman, but a vitally important one and a memorable night in a record breaking crowd at the European Championships at Old Trafford. It's Beth Mead, the hero for England. It wasn't the prettiest of performances, it was a very nervy performance, but they got a win, and I think what that win did was bring the fans back. Beth Mead's first half goal gave England a winning start to Euro 2022 as the Lionesses beat Austria 1-0 in front of a record crowd of over 68,000. Well, a glorious summer's day across the region. Blue sky, sunshine and very high temperatures. A nervous start against Austria, but this is going to be the test of the group. If England can win tonight, they will be into the quarter-finals. They just need to get past Norway. People don't realise how good a team Norway are, especially with Egerberg coming back, their main talisman coming back and being at the lead of their team again. Game two for England. And after the emotion of Old Trafford, it's the Lionesses' toughest opposition in the group stage. Two times European champions Norway. A crucial game between the two favourites to progress to the quarterfinals. Since Serena took over, we played against teams that we should have been putting away a lot more. The fact is there were some times that we were very wasteful in front of goal. It was definitely a bit of cat and mouse. They were on top and it was a bit of a cagey kind of 15 minutes where we were finding what was working for us, what, you know, who do we need to get on the ball, how do we find the space, what's the right movement. Walsh, here's Kirby, and now White. Good turn, she goes down, penalty! <laughs> this could be a dream start for England. So here's Georgia Stanway on the spot to give England the lead. Stanway, brilliant! Oh, you just don't save those! And the Alex is bouncing! That first goal came and it was just a massive, ridiculous breakthrough for us. We were suddenly like, we can't stop now, we need to keep the momentum. Acres of space for me! So then one went in, two went in, three went in. Why to make it three? Literally, it felt like every wave of attack we, we scored. Every shot was a goal. It's made. Oh, it's four. The Lioness 
chances are running away with it. I don't think they figured it out yet. It was like, get it to Beth. So much space for Mead. One on one, Beth Mead still going. It's Mead! Oh, that is sensational! Goal after goal after goal. Oh, it's six! That was England unleashing their full arsenal. Alessio Russo! 7 0 to England. This is incredible. Didn't expect to be so quiet for sure, but more than happy to be. Eight nil. Everything went right. They go through to the knockout stages in style as winners. Score lines like that in a Euros, it, it, it really doesn't happen. The teams are so so close in Europe, the standard is phenomenal. So to see that happen, I don't know, actually, no, I, I still can't believe it happened, even though it did. Um, what was your feeling at half time when you walked down the tunnel and thought, oh, I've got to do a team talk and we're already 6-0 up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, to be honest, I thought, what's going on? <laughs> I didn't get carried away. You know, you've still got a long tournament to play out. We have had two games now. Uh, we're trying to play our best game and today we did, but it's just three points. If you win 1-0 or 8-0, it doesn't make a difference. We, we didn't win anything yet. I felt like I was on board and I was part of the team. I was listening to Serena too about, OK, it's time to focus on the next game. It felt like game by game we were, we were growing. We knew we'd, we'd qualified to get into to the quarterfinals, but we wanted a really big performance. England manager Serena Wiegmann will miss their final group game of the Women's Euros tonight. It's against Northern Ireland after testing positive for COVID. Well, good to lose her for that period of time. Obviously, she wasn't around camp. We had to do a lot of Zoom calls. Serena Wiegmann was in charge of training at the team hotel yesterday and was here at the ground last night. She's going to need to have two negative tests before she can become involved again, according to UEFA protocols. And we are five days away from England's guaranteed quarterfinal and 11 days away from a potential semi-final. So the timing is tricky. I think tonight it will be OK because all the preparation is done. For me, the concern is the next couple of days on the training field and preparing for a quarterfinal. That's my only concern. I thought we started the game quite slow, to be honest, and I thought maybe because the pressure's off, had we took our foot a little bit off the gas. Holloway, that's a great ball as well through the middle. Oh, Wade couldn't quite get onto it. Fantastic pass to play from Northern Ireland. But then there was just some magic moments. <laughs> onto him, onto that left foot, charge down. Sublime strike to break the Northern Ireland resistance. So even when the team maybe weren't firing on all cylinders, here's Mead, shifts it onto our left. We had these players that could just produce these magical moments out of nowhere. Oh, Alessia Russo! Everybody talked about a back heel in that Sweden game, but her goal against Northern Ireland for me was one of the best goals I've seen. It was a turn like uh, Dennis Bergkamp, I thought. Lovely turn, Rousseau! Oh, that is absolutely brilliant! At the time when it happened, I was like, wow, that was incredible. England march into the quarterfinals in frightening form. Another message sent out to the heavyweights participating in this European Championships. England, the team to beat. Football can be very much complicated sometimes. We overcomplicate it, we bring all these tactics and all the talk and the buzz around it, but Serena has an amazing knack of just simplifying things. What's, what's your secret? Well, I don't think I have met very many secrets. I think the fact that people find her difficult to read is the, her greatest strength. She's, that's what keeps you on your toes. I didn't clean my glasses, can you see it? 
I think she changed so much. Um, she really gave us a sense of belief. And, you know, she had that communication in a manager that we've never had before. Oh, it's a lot better. She can be calm. I think that's one of her big attributes, and she passes that on to us as a team and individuals. She's Dutch, so she's very direct, but in a way, we need that. She's slowly understanding the English sense of humour, which is good. It's only took her 12 months. She likes to join in with, with the dancing and, and stuff. But it's nice to have, um, yeah, a, a coach that's a manager that's very personable and you can relate to in that respect. <laughs> I felt like she really understood where I came from and, like, had... Um, you know, empathy for me as a human being. Um, not something I've experienced a lot in football over the years. I like her directness, her honesty, and um, I can't, yeah, really express. Yeah, she's, she's changed my career, really. This, this whole year's just changed everything. So Ian's the boss, um, but we need to be able to connect with her, and I think she's found a good way to do that with the, with the England national team. A couple of hours to go until that England-Spain quarter-final. Spain are without their best player. And within the last minute or so, we've uh, just found out that Serena Wegman, the England manager, has tested negative for COVID, and therefore she will be on the touchline later. The night before we travelled to Brighton, we had a team meeting late at night, and Serena's message was, we are going on lockdown, we're going into a bubble because of COVID, and she just said, we have 10 days to change our lives. Do you want, like, do we want to do it or do we not? Well, she's named the same starting 11 in all three group games, and again, she's done the same tonight. Are you surprised she's gone with the same starting 11? No, I'm not surprised at all. And if you know anything about Serena Wiegmann, what she's done when she won it with the Netherlands was exactly the same. The great thing what she's got with this squad is eager players ready to come on and make a difference. If I even was on, on the bench here, I wouldn't be bothered about being on the bench because I know at some stage I'm going to get a chance and then it's up to me to try and take that chance. How are we feeling? The knockout stage of Euro 2022 start right here. No room for error. One mistake, one hesitation. And your tournament is over. England targeting a place in the final four of a major tournament for the fourth consecutive time. The Spain game was huge. That one was the first time that the Lionesses, they were up against it. I don't think it was tactically that we struggled against Spain, or technically, really. I think sometimes you just have to hold your hands up and say, Spain are a very good team. They are a very good team. They're going to possess the ball. England really, really struggled in the first 45 minutes. We couldn't get Kira Walsh in the game, I think. But Matty for Spain literally dominated that, that game, and I was in awe of her. That seemed to be the game where they decided to, to really turn up the heat and the volume and make it really difficult for us. England have been tested, no doubt about it. Spain have managed to stop England from playing their game so far. A puzzle for Serena Wiegmann to solve at half-time. Some of our players, I think, look tired. We've got to do something to take a chance on when, when, when they come up, that we can then exploit the space that they're leaving, because at the moment, they're comfortable everywhere on the pitch. Serena Thank goodness Fitz. Serena Wiegmann is here tonight out of her COVID isolation, because I imagine she's going to have a lot to do, a lot to sort out right now. Early pressure, Spain resume their ticker tacker passing. Del Castillo, lovely touch, pulls it back. Spain lead! Esther Gonzalez! The atmosphere just hit the floor um, in the stadium and it hit the floor in the studio. And you're thinking, Okay, this is not this is not where we thought this tournament was going to go. 